con todos. Entonces vamos a, vamos a empezar con la charla científica de esta semana, eh, que estará a cargo de eh, la doctora Betsabe Tello. Ella es investigadora asociada de CICEAR y ha trabajado eh, mucho en colaboración eh, conmigo, con mi grupo de investigación. La doctora Elizabeth Tello es doctorada en medicina, doctoranda en medicina por la Universidad per Peruana Cayetano Heredia. Es especialista en medicina familiar por la PUSE, especialista en evaluación de tecnologías sanitarias por el Instituto de Efectividad Clínica y Sanitaria de Buenos Aires, Argentina. Es magíster en gerencia en salud para el desarrollo local por la UTPL. Entonces, la charla que va a dictar hoy del saber es Situación del Desarrollo Infantil en el Ecuador. Bienvenida al saber es un gusto tenerte aquí y adelante con tu presentación. Bueno, voy a hablar sobre la situación del desarrollo infantil en Ecuador. Um, I would like to mention uh, some definition um, that I think that is important. Um, early childhood uh, is defining as a period of a child's life from conception to age five, internationally eight. Uh, care, care uh, means something additional rather than education, such as children's health and nutrition They are involving emotional and social abilities as well as their minds to move policy makers and programs provide a way from thinking exclusively in terms of preschooling. And development, um, development is uh, defined as the process of change in which the child comes to master more and more complex levels of moving, thinking, feeling, and interacting with people and objects in the environment. Um, in the first five years of life, experience and relationships stimulate children's development, creating millions of connections in their brains. In fact, children's brains develop connection faster in the first five years than at any other time in their lives. This is a time when the foundation for learning, health and behavior through what life are laid down. Um, in this slide, we can see um, this part, um, um, the first thousand days are very important and unique window of opportunity to shape lifelong health. The first thousand days of life, the time expanding growth between conception and one second birthday um, is a unique period of opportunity when the foundation of optimum health growth and neurodevelopment across the lifespan are established. Um, healthy development in the early years provides the building blocks for educational, achievement, economic productivity, responsible citizens, lifelong health, strong communities, and successful parenting of the next generation. Um, it's important that the quality of young children's life um, and now is um, national and international priority, expanding and improving comprehensive early childhood care and education, especially for the most vulnerable and disadvantaged children is part of the goals of sustainable development. And last early childhood care and development can define the holistic development of children, including physical, cognitive, language, social, and emotional development from con conception to age five. Um, Why focus on the on early child development? Um, first, uh, brain development is most rapid and vulnerable 
from conce conception to five years. The factors known to affect child development are common, especially in low middle income countries. Um, and per child development has lifelong effects. And the intervention in early childhood are more cost effective than at other age. Uh, we can see the importance um, of, er uh, of early learning. 80% of brain growth and development happen in the first three years. Experience during these years shape how a child sees the world. A child will develop the first uh, 1,000 words of their vocabulary. Research indicates that what happened in the early years is the foundation for the long-term success of the child. This is this, um, um, when it's very important. Um, the, basics, the basic architecture of the brain is constructed a growing process that begins before birth and continue into adulthood. Early experience affect the quality of the architecture by establishing either a study of the pressure foundation for all of the learning, health, and behavior that follow. Um, scientists, uh, scientists now know that chronic and relenting stress in early childhood caused by the extreme problem Poverty, poverty, repeat abuse, or severe mater, maternal depression, for example, can be toxic to the develop, uh, developing brain. While uh, positive stress, moderated, your life physiological response to uncomfortable experience is an important and necessary aspect of healthy development. Toxic stress is the strong a reliable activation of the body's stress management, management system. In the absence of the buffering protection of adult support, toxic stress become built into the body by processes that shape the architecture of the developing brain. Um, in the photograph, uh, we can see the better and the worse. Um, it's like a, a hope con, a, we can see the, the, the brain is an example. The risk, poverty, malnutrition, stunting, poor health, repeat disease, um, and then stimulation, a home environments, impaired cognitive, motor, and social emotional development. Um, in this slide, we see um, the basic architecture of the human brain developed before a child is born. Most of the um, neurons a child will ever have are produced by the middle of gestation and by birth. They have organized, uh, organized um, to form the cortex and the other important brain structures. The major white matter pathways that make up the brain's information processing network are also present. Yet brain development is far from complete in the newborn form. After birth, the child's experience will play an increasingly important role in shaping and refining the major brain pathways and cortical networks. Soon after birth, there is a dramatic increase in the number of connections or synapses through the human brain. By the end of the first years, an infant's brain had nearly twice the number of connections as an adult. Many short life pathways for throughout the infant's brain, creating connection among brain areas, areas that are not observed in adults. This overabundance of connection and pathways gradually declines during childhood, as many of them are prone and disappear. Many factors contribute uh, to this decline, including 
the influence of experience. The activity of neural pathway driven by experience affect whether a particular connection weak, um, weaken or establishes as part of a permanent network. This is a key factor in supporting the development brain's plasticity. plasticity. It's adaptability to experience which confers great survival value. The change in brain connectivity also affects the patterns of uh, structure and organization in the development cortex. Um, um, recent magnetic resonance imaging study, studies have shown that different brains pathways mature at different rates. Furthermore, the maturation of pathways occurs in concert with localized thinning of neocortic, uh, neocortical areas. Cortical thinning is now thought to be an important maker of re, uh, regional brain maturation and development. Change in pathways and cortical thinning are systematic and reflect functional development as well. Recent studies uh, have begun to map the association between learning and this aspect of, of brain development. For example, individual uh, difference in the development of language uh, proficiency have been linked to the patterns of cortical thinning, as well as pathway development. Um, when well, there are a period that is very important in the development of the brain, every experience uh, a baby has formed a neural connection in the brain. Every connection a baby has focuses neural connection in the brain. Every connection forms seven, uh, 700 synapses second during a child's early years. They connect brain cells and form a network that influences everything from the intellectual capacity to problem solving to language. So um, much, ha um, much happened in these early years. The synapses that uh, formed for vision and hearing peak uh, in just four months. And neural connection for language peak around nine months. And a higher cognitive function around in the first year. Um, this uh, are uh, sensitive periods. Different components of the brain have peak periods of construction at different times during development from conception um, through early childhood. This period of expansive formation and growth are controlled by different genes that are turned and on and off by time and location related process. This change in gene expression are the greatest during fetal development and early infancy. In the first two months after conception, the most strongly expressed genes are those that control the proliferation of new neurons and associated cells in the fetal brain. Um, the dominance of this process fall of rapidly up to the time of fear when it is only at around one tenth of its initial strength. A gene expression for new neurons is almost completely suppressed by the age of six years. During the later months of fetal growth, gene expression increased for the growth of synapses connecting the neurons and the axon dendrites, and dendrites which allow for multiple connection for each neuron reaching a maximum by six months after a child's birth. The genes that control um, myelination of the axon on the reach half of their expression strengthen the time of ear and continue to increase their influence for the further 12 months. This dramatic change in the growth peak of different components of the brain and the maturation of the structures and process that depend on them mean that there are sensitive periods when environment conditions are more likely 
to have specific effects. For example, the infant caregiver relaxes it depend on the quality and um, availability of caregiving early in life. The same period that is sensitive to the effect of iron deficiency on myelination and density of dopamine receptors. Mm, we can see in this slide uh, a study um, in the, um, some evidence that uh, early childhood development intervention in, in develop, developing countries um, have both short and long term effect. And uh, some uh, Sally's work uh, is a uh, Graham McGregor, the author, um, Jamaican, uh, Jamaican intervention, weekly home visited by community. Uh, uh, the first, um, um, the study is in, in two groups. The stunting child, uh, children with stunting and children um, no stunting. And um, Followed with the same children um, at uh, 9 and 24 months, and follow up same children at um, 80 years. Um, we can see that uh, um, when uh, the, the author measure development portion. Uh, we can see uh, the difference in the children with the stunting and children um, with a normal condition. And um, we can uh, we can see four groups: the control uh, children that receive supplemented, uh, other group receive stimulated and the other groups receive supplemented and stimulated. And we can see that this group uh, have um, a development portion um, com I com um, <laughs> uh, I no sé cómo decir esto. <laughs> a ver, um, Bueno, eh, stimulate only and supplemental plus stimulate. Um, we can see the, the supplement uh, comprises one uh, kilogram meal passes formula per week for two years. And the stimulation weekly PlayStation at home with a community here late. The children's development um, question was accepted on the Griffith's mental development scale. Initially, the, the um, stunting groups development quotient were lower than those of the non-stunting group. Um, and those of the control group declined during the study, increasing their deficit. A stimulation and supplement, uh, supplementation had a significant independent beneficial effect on the children's development. Estimates of the supplementation effect range from um, uh, for the hand of eye subscale um, for the locomotor subscale and those for the stimulation effect. Um, bueno, um, finally, uh, we can see that the stimulation and supplementation um, was better for the stunting children. Um, in this uh, slide, uh, we can see a abno a abnormal brain development following sensory neglect in early childhood. This image illustrates the negative impact of neglect on the developing brain. In the computed uh, tomography scan on the left is an image from healthy three years old with an average head size uh, 50 percent. 
The image uh, of the right is from a three years old child suffering from severe, uh, severe sensory um, deprivation neglect. This child's brain is significantly smaller than average and has enlarged ventriculars and cortical atrophy. And, um, and this slide we can see to the left are the brain scan for two years old. The child um, on the left experience of healthy environment. The child on the right has, um, was severely neglected. The white circles define areas of brain architecture and activity. The left brain has developed normally. The brain of the right will remain under um, developed into an adult. Early experience influence brain development. This photo com um, compares the brain activity in two toddlers. The more colorful scan is a healthy child. The other is a, a, a childhood experience persistent neglect. Such experience impede the development of the part of the brain involved in exquisite function and higher order thinking. When these areas are under development, children's ability to regulate their behavior, problem solve, and focus their attention are severely compromised. The effects of early experience persist into adulthood. And um, how do we support healthy child development? Mm -hmm. This is a proposal from the World Health Organization that called nurturing care. Um, nurturing care ensure, ensures a child's environment is focuses on their needs, health, nutrition, safety, emotional support, and social interaction. Some people nurturing care is why the infant's brain expects and depends upon for healthy development. Basis of these components, um, I will present the data from Ecuador, which for the first time carries out an evaluation of child development in the framework of the National Health and Nutritional Survey. Mm. What is the situation of children in Ecuador? One third of the mothers of children under five in the country have received basic education. And half of the children in Ecuador live in the two poorest skin teals. Is this a poorest skin teal and rich skin teal? Um, health. Uh, this, um, this data is pre pandemic. And um, uh, thirty four percent of child have respiratory infection, and um, approximately ten percent of children have diarrhea. And the vaccine, especially um, MMR, the um, we have the um, uh, lower vaccine coverage is for um, MMR with measles vaccine, uh, Sentinel vaccine. And the warning, um, 35%. Iron, supplement, uh, iron supplementation is very low, um, 24%. Um, Postnatal care, is, is very, very low, 7%. Um, prenatal care visit, 83%. Um, adequate, uh, adequate nutrition. Um, the 8% approximately 
I have a uh, low beer weight. A stunting is 23%. Uh, overweight obesity, uh, 8%. And we have a new phenomenon, uh, the double burden of malnutrition. Uh, that is a simultaneous manifestation uh, of all conditions, undernutrition and overweight or obesity, uh, 5%. Responsive caregiving, 6.5%, um, uh, children doing four or more play activities with the father. Um, 50 uh, percent children who perform four or more play activities with the mother. Um, 28 percent children um, under under five lower quality home environment. Um, 51 percent children age. Uh, 12 um, under five months um, years have experienced violent discipline, including physical punishment aggression. 47% children under five years have experienced violent discipline, including psychological aggression. And 27% children under three years have lower quality home environment. Security and safety. Um, 3% children under five are among those left alone for at least one hour a week. Um, for percent children under five uh, left in the care of siblings younger than 10 for at least one hour a week. Mm. 13 children uh, under three years at any child care center, public and private. And 20 percent um, attending um, a program that call growing up with our children. Opportunities for early learning. 50% um, uh, percentage of children uh, um, who have learning materials at home, at least one children's school. Uh, the other 50% don't have 66% uh, children uh, under five who have been engaged in activities that leads for to promote learning and the school readiness uh, and with other supports. Uh, we can see the, the gap, uh, the motor development in the rural and urban areas. And we can see that um, the difference is um, significant and the um, rural areas, the child that lives in the rural areas uh, have the light uh, motor development. Um, this is uh, a graphic that we can see the the gap in the language development. Um, we can see the difference is um, um, important uh, under five years, in, um, between three and five years. Um, this, um, when, excuse me, I, I can uh, translate this uh, 
this uh, graph, um, we can see the gap and the difference of the numbers of words that the children says, uh, said, um, uh, the difference uh, in the numbers of words uh, in different areas, uh, urban and rural areas. The difference is, is um, in numbers of words, um, Mm, 15, uh, 15 months. It's very critical. And the language is a proxy uh, of the cogn cognitive development because um, there are many processes in the brain, uh, como language compre uh, comprehension, background knowledge, facts, concepts, etc. Vocabulary, read, precision, lead, etc. Language structures, syntax, semantics, verbal, reasoning, inference, metaphor, literacy, knowledge, real concept, gen, uh, gen etc. Word recognition, phonological awareness, syllables, phonemas, etc. Decoding, alphabet principle, letter sound, correspondence. Sight recognition of familiar words. Increasingly automatic and increasingly strategic. And uh, finally, skilly reading. Um, it's a, a study um, in the United States, the early catastrophe. Uh, we can see the word the child heard is spoken per hour in, family, in professional families. Um, average uh, 2,100 words uh, per hour. Working class families um, is. Um, 1,200 words. And low, uh, low income families, uh, 600 words. Just the, the difference is, is very important. The million word gap. Um, new research show the different numbers of words kids will have heard by age five bases on the how often parents read to them. Never read to 4,000. One, two times per week, and three, uh, five times per week, daily, and five books a day, one million, four um, thousand uh, words. It's very important, the difference. Um, the Lancet uh, have published an article with um, uh, we, uh, we can do for the nurturing care for young children. Um, and an intervention start in the adolescent health and development. It's very important um, the service and programs, health and nutrition service that support care for child development, education, women's completed education uh, of primary and continue to secondary schooling. The um, mother's education is a determinant of the health and the child development and determining early learning opportunities for young children, child care, preschooling, and formal education. Water, sanitation, and hygiene. Child protection service, prevention of violence in the home and in the community. Birth registration, prevention of child maltreatment, abuse, and neglect. Care for children with disabilities and developmental difficulties. 
social protection service for, uh, for vulnerable families, conditional and, and unconditional cash transfer, family health insurance. Enable environment uh, policies to support families um, and the system. Uh, we can work the multi-sectoral coordination, capacity building, indicators, monitoring and evaluation, and invest financing. Um, there are um, very, very problems. Uh, 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 we can see um, the impacts of coronavirus disease on the nurturing care, uh, direct health impacts, health and nutrition system impacts, economic impacts, social and child protection impacts, and child development and learning impacts. Um, Mm. Uh, uh, I, I think that uh, this multifactorial um, condition um, uh, is uh, very difficult for the child and inequitable access to nurturing care. Nurturing care. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Betsabe. Eh, nos estaba acompañando Ana Lucía Moncayo, pero tuvo que salir porque ya tenía clases, solo nos acompañó la primera parte. Pero quería saber si alguien tiene alguna pregunta para Betsabe. Sí, Ruth. Hola, Betsa, muchas gracias por la exposición. Um, los datos de, de, del estudio de Ensanud eh, que ustedes manejaron eh, corresponden al 2018, ¿verdad? Sí. Entonces, ¿cuán, ¿cómo creen o cómo piensan ustedes que han manejado muy bien estos indicadores de desarrollo infantil? ¿Cuán alterados se verán por la pandemia? ¿El impacto va a ser súper alto o, o no estiman que vaya a ser tan grande? Porque claro, habían ciertas medidas de protección con el aislamiento que a veces son más como que, que podrían generar más bien algo de cuidado. No sé cómo es su aproximación para, cómo es el impacto con la pandemia. Um, bueno, podemos ver que los datos de desarrollo, es la primera vez que se levantan los datos a nivel nacional. Y um, siendo prepandemia son unos datos horribles, porque podemos ver 50% de los niños son pegados, un porcentaje chiquito de niños va a los centros de cuidado, eh, vimos un porcentaje de niños que son dejados solitos en los hogares y vemos que las oportunidades de aprendizaje son súper bajas. Solo el 50% de las mamás interactúan con sus hijos y el 6% de los padres están involucrados en actividades de juego con los hijos. Solo el 50% de los, de los hogares tienen un libro para, eh, dirigido a niños. El otro 50% no lo tienen. Entonces, eh, durante la y vimos que cobertura de CREP estaba bajo. 78.8 es la cobertura más baja, siendo sarampión una vacuna centinela. Entonces, lo que podemos ver es que eh, post pandemia eh, la violencia se incrementó porque UNICEF levantó algunos datos de desarrollo, entonces incrementó la violencia intrafamiliar y obviamente los niños están en una situación de desventaja porque no pueden defenderse. Muchos hogares eh, empezaron a vivir en seguridad alimentaria, entonces es probable que eh, la nutrición también se haya alterado. Y muchos niños dejaron de ir a las escuelas, y, al, y a los centros de desarrollo. Y habíamos visto en la presentación que mientras mayor es el número de palabras que un niño escucha, una nueva palabra es una nueva conexión en el cerebro. Entonces, mientras menor es el número de palabras, hay una menor estimulación. Entonces vemos que la parte de estimulación y de nutrición son importantes, van de la mano para el desarrollo. 
Y esto se vio afectado en la pandemia. Entonces, lo que nosotros estamos abogando, qué bueno, Ruth, que estés aquí, <risa> pero estamos abogando es que no solamente se levante información de nutrición, de desnutrición crónica, porque estamos viendo doble carga de la malnutrición, que va increciendo, que va subiendo la tendencia. Y lo que podemos ver también es que lo que no se mide, no se sigue. O sea, tú ya tienes una medición, entonces es importante en esta nueva levantamiento de información que, que va a realizar el gobierno que levanten un módulo de desarrollo infantil para saber post pandemia qué pasó, porque vamos a estar peor. Eh, si pre pandemia, con todo lo que supuestamente estaba seguro, los niños iban a, a los centros de desarrollo, etcétera, post pandemia la situación estuvo peor. La depresión materna, mientras una madre tiene depresión, no le va a dar de lactar al niño, no le va a cuidar como ella quiere. Incluso los niños tienen aplanamiento facial porque no pueden imitar la risa. Porque una madre que está con buen estado se ríe con su bebé. Dice, hola bebé, qué lindo que eres. Y entonces se ríe. Y el bebé aprende. Pero una madre que tiene depresión ni se ríe. Y los bebés tienen aplanamiento facial, no tienen expresión. O sea, y muchas personas ahora vemos eh, post pandemia y en el transcurso de la pandemia que tuvieron trastornos del estado de ánimo. Entonces es evidente que cobertura de vacunas baja, que los controles, imagínate, eh, suplementación de hierro, que es universal, estaba en 27% la cobertura de hierro y se supone que es universal. Control postnatal, en la primera semana de vida se mueren un montón de bebés, desde el 7% y en las normas te dice que es obligatorio y estamos en 7% de cobertura, que es bajísimo. Post pandemia, cuando los, eh, lo, o digamos en el transcurso de la pandemia, con los servicios cerrados, esa cobertura tuvo que haber bajado por todas las movilizaciones, los eh, médicos enfermos, etcétera, etcétera. Entonces vamos a estar peor, pero justamente medir, identificar te permite actuar. Si tú no conoces los datos, no, no sabemos, no podemos comparar qué ha pasado en este antes y después, entonces es difícil que podamos implementar programas si solo nos enfoquemos a desnutrición crónica y en niños menores de dos años. O sea, vimos, por eso partí del, del concepto de lo que era desarrollo infantil, tomando en cuenta a los niños hasta los ocho años. ¿Ves? Gracias, Ruth, por tu pregunta. Gracias, Betsy. Muchas gracias, Betsy. Eh... La verdad que esta última parte me dejó pensando más todavía. <risa> eh, ¿Alguna sí. otra pregunta tiene alguien? Hola, Betsa. Eh, mi nombre es Manuel. Les llamo aquí de los, de los Estados Unidos, pero eh, una preguntita. Sí me sorprendió mucho la estadística que mostró acerca de, los, de la involucración de los padres, del papá, sobre los niños. ¿Por qué cree que están bajo? <risa> Me, me, yo, yo siendo papá, o sea, yo, yo también, digamos, no tuve la mejor relación con mi papá, pero yo siendo papá con mis hijas, o sea, yo estoy involucrado, estoy jugando y obviamente oh, un factor, ¿no? Sería como, igual me crecí en un buen ambiente, un, con una buena mamá, abuelos y todo eso que interactuaron conmigo y todo eso, y, y eso me motiva a ser, estar involucrado con mis hijos y todo eso. ¿Pero por qué cree que es tan bajo? Bueno, yo creo que nos falta sensibilizarnos en el tema de desarrollo y muchas eh, actividades de cuidado son delegadas a las mujeres, primero. O sea, es algo que ha pasado de generaciones. Entonces podemos ver que el cuidado eh, se carga a las mujeres y muchos, muy pocos padres se involucran en los temas de crianza. Eh, por un tema de género, es un tema cultural también. Y, y creo que este tema no hablamos de los establecimientos de salud. O sea, esto para nosotros es súper importante, pero en las guías anticipatorias no lo abordamos. O sea, eh, ¿cómo, ¿cómo jugamos con los niños? ¿Cómo leemos cuentos, las canciones que les cantamos? Mírale a los ojos, acaríciale. Todo eso es básico, pero muchas de las familias aquí también son violentas. Vimos el 50% de las familias pegan a los hijos, y eso que no describí cuáles son los maltratos. O sea, son cachetadas, son correazos, chancletazos, o sea, es una violencia terrible. Y eso en muchos hogares está eh, normalizado, además. 
O sea, la crianza, la crianza con violencia está, está normalizada. Eh, más bien es raro cuando tú no le pegas al hijo. O sea, eh, es raro que una mamá esté dando de lactar a un niño más de dos años, por ejemplo. La sociedad presiona mucho. No, se va a ser mal criado. Pero en los padres es un tema de género, pero yo creo, Manuel, que puede ser una oportunidad para investigar un poco más. Eh, esta falta de involucramiento. Yo también veo que ahora los papás se involucran más en la crianza, pero al ser la medición eh, aquí en el Ecuador y a nivel nacional, solo el 6% es bien, bien bajo. O sea, hay mucho trabajo por hacer y solo el 50% de las mamás estén involucradas, que también es bajo, debería ser un número mucho mayor. Entonces, eh, creo que sí tenemos un bastante trabajo por hacer aquí en el país. Gracias, Manuel, por tu pregunta. No, gracias a usted y por su trabajo. Gracias, Betsabe. Eh, les aviso a todos que esto está siendo grabado. Luego les comparto, como siempre, la charla. Y, y si tienen alguna duda, también pueden contactar a Betsabe. Gracias. Bien. Muchas gracias, Betsabe. <risa> gracias, que estén muy bien. No gracias tarde. a todos los que se mantuvieron. Gracias, Ruth. <risa> No, no, es que había personas que sí me dijeron que tenían clases y iban a salir antes, pero bueno, agradezco a los que se mantuvieron. Gracias. Chao.